lot. Let me ask you a deeper question, which is, you find America unfair? Okay. What's a fairer country? Can you think of a country where you'd rather, for example, go on trial for a felony? There isn't really a country I'd rather be tried for a felony in. Um, per, I, and I, I, don't, I really doubt that it's... Um, grassroots support organization in the United States says it will pay professional protesters $50 an hour in addition to a $2,500 monthly retainer to support their efforts. We're joined now by Dom Tulipso, Director of Operations in Los Angeles for Demand Protest. Dom, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, no problem, Tucker. So um, this is a sham. Your company isn't real. Your website is fake. The claims you have made are lies. This is a hoax. Let me start at the beginning, however, with your name, Dom Talipso, which is not your real name. It's a fake name. Well, we ran you through law enforcement level background checks, and that name does not exist. So let's start out with the truth. Tell me what your real name is. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Well, let me let me just say a couple things. One, having an, a, a great grandparent who may or may not have been Native American is not great, a qualification. Great, great. Being one thirty-second of some racial group is not a qualification, okay? It's an accident of history. It's something over which you had no control and for which, in a just society, you would not be rewarded. And so this is an amusing story. Obviously, her campaign's blowing up over this. She's lying. Her remark about, oh, I, all Indians have high cheekbones. You know, I also like feathers. I mean, it's so <laughs> offensive and dumb. But leaving that aside, it does it provide a window into a system that is fundamentally corrupt, that rewards people based on their DNA. Um... No, the people that he's already surrounding himself with are not good. Uh, they don't reflect the values that I believe the Americans hold. I do not believe that the Americans um, had. Um, Michael, I'm trying, I'm trying to be choices. patient, but the guys appointed like three people. I mean, I'm, they're, you know, they're. 3,760 okay positions open. With an all, a leader of the all-right There are three movement? people that appointed. Reflects, so, but what about you yeah, and so your friends who are decent? Of the people Why he's are you volunteering? Reflect the values of, of white nationalists, which I do not okay. believe reflect you know the what? values of Americans. Now, I said I took you seriously, and now I don't. Because as quick as lightning, just like the tarantula it's killing, the centipede has two curved hollow fangs, which inject paralyzing venom. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go yeah, to your no colleague here. No, because you're throwing white supremacy around, and you honestly know what you're talking about. I didn't say white about. supremacy. If you're you putting words in my mouth, Tucker. If you disagree with their views on things, stay what they are, but instead you're name-calling. So I'm going to go over to your friend Brett here and ask an, a, a, a pretty simple question. I'm a beta male. Beta male. Beta male. Be 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 beta male. You are a cop. Beta male. Diego, fuck the internet. Racist okay. hate speech but, comes into play. They're, they're but, able but to protest not, as they did today. I'm, I'm they doing my best to take you seriously at Villanova before okay. they were attacked. Nobody takes you seriously. I'm trying to take you seriously. Wow. You're accusing this guy of racial demagoguery, and you called for white genocide. You also applauded the Haitian Revolution for killing whites. Look, those are your views. I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed to express them. I'm merely pointing out the irony that you're, you're trafficking in race hatred, and yet saying that Charles Murray shouldn't be allowed to speak because he traffics in race hatred. Are you self-aware enough to catch that? that? No, no. I have to say no, 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 You sir. reserve the right to say no. At least I'm gonna say that I tried. You Joining us now, the singers and the songwriters you just saw, the ones who wrote that updated version, Lydia Liza and Josiah Lemansky. Lydia, Josiah, thanks a lot for joining Hi, us. Traditional children's songs, if you look at them through the lens that a lot of people are looking at this song through, it's easy to get offended. I mean, Yankee Doodle yeah. Dandy has a line in there about, with the girls be handy. Is that adding to rape culture, do you think? Or Mary Had a Little Lamb, is that insensitive, do you think, to the animal rights people? Does it feel that way? You know, not I, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's, you know, offensive or that's promoting rape, but I think it, it can't hurt to just update it, I mean, you know, just mm -hmm. update it to uh, a different song if you want to. Let's just kind of have some fun with it. Yeah. So, like, you know, Yankee I mean, Doodle I mean, got the girl's consent before getting handy with her sort of thing? 
Gotti! <laughs> Gotti! <laughs> No, yeah, not necessarily, no. but I mean, it's, it's, you know, kids, everyone's on. How dare he say such blasphemy? I've got to do something. Bob, there's nothing you can do. <sighs> well, I guess I'll just have to develop a sense of humor. On your Twitter account, you said, some guy gave up his first class seat for a uniformed soldier. People are thanking him. I'm trying not to vomit or yell about Mosul. Was that satire too? What does that mean? Are you going to blame Steve Bannon for that as well? I think it's really irresponsible to blindly support, for example, wars that send off young people uh, into combat, risk their lives, kill many others, as we've just seen in Mosul, 200 people incinerated by U.S. bombs, and, you know, and to not do that in a way that expands anyone's freedom, that makes anyone less secure. The Iraq okay, war has not blaming, protected anyone's freedom. But you're blaming the soldier. You're not blaming the policymakers. Oh, you're saying, not. No, no, you're absolutely saying giving not. up a seat for a soldier in uniform made you want to vomit. You're not saying giving up a seat for the guy who made the war policy, but for the soldier, the guy who's risking his life. Why'd that make you feel like throwing up? I think U.S. troops need real support. They don't need symbolic gestures. What they need is not a first-class seat. What they need is health care support, psychological support. Women in uniform need to not be subjected to an epidemic of sexual assault. And more than anything, they don't need to be deployed, have their lives risked, be taken away from their families for wars that do nothing and no good for anyone. But why is it bad to get... Okay, that's fine, but why is it bad to give them a first-class seat? I'm missing that. Someone's trying to be nice to the guy who's going through all these hardships you just described, and that makes you mad. Why? Those gestures devoted toward those who most deserve them in our society, and I have the deepest respect for anyone who, particularly for economic reasons, makes difficult decisions, whether it's joining the military, whether it's, you know, doing other dangerous work that has to take place in our society, whether it's being an economic migrant. It's good for tons of other countries. I totally get that. But American taxpayers have got to be expected to care about their own country first, shouldn't they? I understand the taxpayer argument, but they've actually done studies on this to show that it's neutral because they bring, they take jobs, they have to take jobs, they have to pay taxes, they're uh -huh. reimbursing flight costs and a lot of the costs that you would think are part of the budget. So it ends up being cost neutral. But we have massive unemployment in this country, massive. I know, our massive. Our workforce participation rate is the lowest since the 70s. So why at a time when ordinary people who mm -hmm. want to work can't find jobs, why would we be helping people from other countries get those jobs? Well, that's a business problem. That has nothing no, to do with that's a tax social and well, when social you have problem. Companies going overseas and settling overseas and taking jobs away from America, that's a, that's a problem. Well, you just trade. said the U.S. government is mm -hmm. bringing people in and requiring them to get jobs that presumably some Americans would like. Why well, is that good for Americans? You know, unfortunately, in a lot of these situations, they're, they're low-level jobs like, like McDonald's and, uh, you know, these are the types of jobs that they're getting that most Americans, especially educated Americans, which, you know, is a higher and higher rate every year, and those who are unemployed, are not taking cost So the black program. youth unemployment rate is like the highest in my lifetime. So you would say to them, sorry, it's going to a serious. No, I think you're jumping from one to extreme to another, oh, Tucker. Seems related. And I think these people all deserve better. They deserve to not have to join the military if they would rather just get an okay, education. Okay, but he, but he, but he did. So he he doesn't have, have a government subsidized job at a university like you. So why that make you mad? Returning to not have the health care and the psychological, the psychological support that they need. This is how we support the troops, not by sending them off into wars. Okay. So you began this conversation with reference to your own scholarship and the academic journals that you and your fellow professors publish in. And because I do want to take you seriously, I actually spent some time reading some of them today. And, and I, I just want to, I want you to explain to me what this means. Now, I'm, I was an editor for a long time, not an academic press, but an editor. You wrote this, a piece called Dual Power in the Venezuelan Revolution. This is the second paragraph, and I'm quoting it. By viewing the process through the Leninist concept of dual power, that is the construction of an autonomous alternative power capable of challenging challenging the existing state structure. We can see that the establishment of communal councils in Venezuela is clearly a positive step toward the development of fuller and deeper democracy, which is encouraging in and of itself. Now, that's a sentence with too many Absolutely. adjectives, a passive construction, imprecise language. It's high school writing. It's crap. Ha! Got him! And I'm wondering, is your scholarship serious? I really appreciate I mean, you digging into the vault. I appreciate you digging into no, the no, vault. I, I, to no, I'm to some of my You're not an impressive scholar. We're, we're really That's what I'm saying. That. You're a performance artist. <laughs> Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that.